So yeah, um, as I was saying in the last video, which you probably already watched if you are watching this one, or if you haven't, then I suggest you go back and watch it because that will explain what we're doing. Um, this is the, uh, the crank, as I was saying. Um, I've taken one pedal off, which is here. Um, so what we're going to do now is just unscrew all of these, uh, take them off, and then we're going to mock it up on the um, oh the hub. I forgot what it was called then. So you want to take this off first, which is the big silver nut. You want to lay everything out so that you know where it all came from. Because, uh, then it's much easier to put back together. Sorry, am I doing this the wrong way around? You can't see what I'm doing, am I? So I've taken... This was on first. Then it was this. And this has a little ridge in it. don't know whether you can see that. Yeah, the little ridge there. That goes in that slot there. Hopefully you can see that. That was next. Then there was this big thick washer and that just sat right there. And now we're undoing this one. Which is the... Um, this holds the bearings. It's the race for the bearings but it screws on. two bearings off, one, two, now uh, if this was on a BMX then the bottom bracket would sit by there and then that would have the housing for the other side of the bearings, if you, if you want to see how it all works I, I presume you might know, um, and I suggest just looking on Google Images of uh, what BMX cranks look like, blueprints, diagrams, explosions, stuff like that, that should give you enough detail. Right, so this is what we've got now. Actually, I might just take this other pedal off just for the fun of it. Oh. Tighter than I thought. just leave it there it's too embarrassing to do on camera uh, right what was I saying yeah right so here we go this is the adapter plate I was talking about um, and here's our hub so what basically what I want to do is see what widths we've got uh, you know what how what our lengths are um, what the pedals are going to look like. Um, just pretty much see what I can actually do, just a bit of a prob problem solving thing. So I think what I'll first do is take this spindle out of here um, and then I'll, I'll just see what it looks like against this and see whether it might actually work. Because obviously we're cutting out this middle section here, this section. And then we're replacing it with this because we need to. The, in fact, I'll just pause the video and show you once I've done it. Right. So uh, as you can see, that's like that. I've taken the uh, the nut off in there, and uh, it comes out like that. That's the spindle that we've got to work with. I'm using 14 mil because it'll be under quite a lot of stress because it's uh, the track's all front wheel drive. Um, and if you go trying to go up a hill or something, um, then that's why we're using 14 because it's strong. So what we've got here is our hub, which uh, you probably know how that works because you've probably ridden a bike if you're watching this video. So what we're going to try and do is basically we want to replace all of these washers here. 
and all of the bearings with this. Now this will be attached to the rest of the wheel because the spokes come out of these holes here. Some of you are probably like watching this thinking, God, I, I already know this, but um, I'm trying to explain it for people who are a little bit less experienced. Um, but bear with me. Um, yeah, so this will be attached to a wheel eventually. If if it's not this one, it will be one either identical or very similar because this is one that I'm using as a prototype and I haven't decided whether I'll be using it as the final piece or not. It'll probably turn out that way because uh, I'll end up re-threading the spokes from the wheel that's already on the trike, which is just freewheeling. There's, you can't pedal it. There's nothing going on with it. Um, yeah, so... That wants to go in there basically. So um, let's take this off here. It takes quite a while, it's got a lot of thread on it. You're probably wondering well, why don't I just put it in the drill? Probably, well, you probably know that. It ruined the thread. Right. So this is our spindle here. What I'm going to do now is get a pair of calipers and basically measure everything and see whether it will work. So these are my set of calipers. Um, so what I'm going to do now, these this is obviously 14 mil, but I'm just checking. Yeah, 14 mil. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so this is at its fattest that we're going to be able to cut it off at it's 20 mil. Yeah, 20 mil. And the 20 mil runs for a depth of. Four mil, I'd say, and then we've got a forty-five degree slope. I don't know if you can see that. I keep moving it out of shot. There's a forty-five degree slope there, and then I don't think this is any wider than the spindle. So I think we're only going to be able to get it for the like what eight mil. We're only going to be able to thread it for the eight mil that's there, unless. What we do is end up cutting this directly in the middle, having this part here go into the bearing and thread the inside of that and then you have more, you have about 15mm to thread onto. But then all I'm thinking of is there's a lot of waste and I don't want to end up cutting this because this is, it's well engineered and it's the only one I've got. So, what I think, well, we'll measure this, see what, what this is at. Oh. So if we were to drill directly into this, we'd be giving ourselves a 2mm wall, which don't think will be very strong so all in all we could have a maximum of 10 mil the ma maximum depth that we can drill is 10 mil so All I'm thinking of is I don't know whether this will go deep enough into these pedal arms that it'll give it enough strength that we can pedal off it 
or I can pedal off it, you won't be, will you? Um, well, unless you build one yourself. Uh, which is, it's been relatively easy to be fair, like there's been a hook, hook, oh, speak properly, a couple of hiccups, because there isn't really any videos out there that show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it, or any with audio anyway, and it's always like bits and bobs, I know this is, I've only made this video and building it, like the rest of it's, the frame's done, I've got some pictures I might make a slideshow of, but this has been the hardest thing so far and I've only ever seen end product videos on how to make this apart from one guy um, if I can find the video I'll leave a link in the description who made this but it's like it's proper sketchy um, the bearings aren't held in properly it's all none of it's symmetrical it, it works but it's why I, I, I wouldn't trust it with my with even my weight on it and I'm not the heaviest of people. Um, so yeah, the, there is ways to do it. But I want to do it better. Basically. So I'm going to go and see what length this will give us. If we add another 10 mil to this. And then I'll have to do some research on what bearings I'm going to use. And what mountings. And then see how much space we've actually got to work with. Because this spindle is designed to allow stunt pegs on. Um but whether that will allow room for however far we're going to screw this into the pedal arms and the bearings which are going to be attached to the flat plate on the end of the forks is a different matter and that depends how much we need to cut off of this crank here but because the crank has this lip here and the two threads I don't know because they're threaded they won't fit in where the bearing goes, so I have to put this in because this is a uniform size because the two threads are different sizes so I don't know, I don't know so I'll go and measure up how much room 20mm either side will give us and then, I don't know, I'll talk for a little bit longer and you'll probably get bored and then I'll have to go and research um, what bearings I should be using so that will probably be the end of the video so I'll update you on what um, yeah on how much extra room this will give us with the extra pedal arms and then that will probably be the end so so this is what the trike's at at the moment and um, let's just give you a shot at that wheels and all um, so yeah this is where it's at at the moment um, what I want to know is whether we can fit bearings bolted to here or well the bearing housing will be bolted to here and then the bearings come out about that far what I want to know is whether we can get the pedal arms on as well because this whole thing this is a separate piece this, is, this isn't a rear wheel hub this is just the front wheel hub because there's no, there's no sprocket on it um, so yeah I don't know how much room this that will give us um, so yeah that's what I'm going to measure now so the maximum or the minimum that we can go well no it is the maximum isn't it the maximum length we can get with the the rear wheel hub and the, the sprocket what did I say it was 215mm now the forks um, outside width are 112mm, 111mm, something around there, yeah 111mm apart, so um, I bent these slightly inwards, these forks, to try and account for it, so we have 111mm um, in between, so that's 215 minus 111, so 100 and 104, and then that's 50, we have 52mm to work with either side, so as long as I get, what 
stops at. I can only count for 10 mil. Right. Hang on. I can count for. Third, wait, hang on. What did we say? There was 10 mil that we can drill into there to thread this in. So that's 10 mil off that. So that's 42 mil. So we can. The maximum depth on our bearings can be 42 mil. So we can have a bearing that's that wide, including the housing. So as long as it's that or less, we can make up the difference in washers and nuts. That should be sorted. Right, so I'll go and get all that written down. Um, and you can catch me in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.